So in this session, we're going to look at just creating a simple player. Now, this is the simplest way to create a player, and we're going to use this as a base to develop the player and to develop the collisions. So the way that I like to do this is to link the player to scene. So if you imagine you've got 100 levels and you can work your player through all these levels, it really makes sense for you to build your player once and then link it to the scenes that you need. And then we can tweak the mechanics to kind of work through those scenes. So let's create the scene. So file, sorry, scene and new scene. And let's add our node. So we have a sequence of three nodes for our player. So the first node is a collision detector, which is a kinesthetic body 2D. So if you just type in kin and you can see over here, I've used it before, but I wanted to show you this way because there are two kinds of kinesthetic bodies. The first one is for the 3D engine. But because we're making a 2D game, we want this one here that says kinesthetic body 2D. So this is the one we're going to use for our player. We can click on it again and we can just label it player. And then click off of it. The next thing we need to do is with this player selected, we need to create a sprite. So once again, you can type in sprite here or you can just take it from the recently created. And then we just need one more. Now it gives us a warning up here about the, the node that we actually need. So it says here that you have no shape, so you can't detect collisions. So you can either add a collision shape 2D or a collision polygon 2D. The one that we're gonna use is this collision shape 2D. So once again, select the player, and then it's collision shape 2D. I've got it here, but let's just show you it from this menu as well, to know that you can get two here. So you've got a collision shape, in red, which is for the 3D engine, and this collision shape here in kind of purpley blue, which is the 2D engine. So double click on this, and it will set them all up. We have another warning, but we're gonna, we're gonna sort that out in just a second, okay? So the next thing we need to do is add our sprite or our player. Just like we've added assets in the past, it's exactly the same here. So when you've got the sprite selected, you come down to the texture. I'll tell you what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna give you a chance to set all that up. So let's go to the pause screen and you guys can set up your player with those three nodes. So pause the video and set up your player. Great. So now let's set up our texture. So let's come over to the assets and you can have a completely different asset for this or you can reuse one. The one that I'm going to use is just a simple ball. So click and drag onto the texture. So let's just click here and then let go. Make sure it's on the texture, not the normal map. That's what keeps happening to me, is it keeps going on the normal map. Now you'll notice that it's really, really big. The inclination at this particular moment is to move that. Do not move your player just yet, okay? Because these are linked objects. So if we click on this one, you'll notice that this is slightly smaller. And then you click on this and you'll notice obviously it's massive. And then this one's smaller still. So we have to make all of these match. So I've gone ahead of time. So let's start with the sprite. And I've gone ahead of time and I've worked out that this is actually 0.4 of the size. So if I come to transforms and I come down to scale and I can say 0 0.4. And you'll have to test this for yourself. And then 0 0.4 again. You do have to press enter at this point. Um, otherwise the, the settings won't take. So press enter and you'll notice that my settings have now gone down. If I click on the actual player, which is the kinesthetic um, 2D node, kinematic body 2D node, sorry, um, you'll notice that now they are roughly the same size and that's absolutely fine. The final thing we need to do is get this, give this a shape. So let's zoom in using these plus buttons. Let's just zoom in, move it around until we get it big enough so we can actually see what this shape looks like. So it says here, you need to add a shape in order for this to work. Cancel that. In order for this to work, we'll get a message in a second. So let's add a shape. So here is the shape, it's null. You've got this little drop down box, and if you click on that, you can add the shape. Now, because it's a ball, I'm gonna add the circle. If you had some kind of character, the best one to use is this capsule, but I'm gonna use the circle because it is a ball and it's nice and easy. And then we have to match the size. 
Now, the one you want to click is this inner circle, not these outer ones. This will change the scale, and that's not what you want to do. It will mess everything up. So using this inner one, just click and drag until it matches the size. Okay. So get that. So it's, it's exactly the same size. And once we're happy with that, we'll just click through them, make sure we're all happy. We want to do one more thing, and then I'll pause the video. So click on the player, the kinematic t body tune D node. And then we want to click this button here. When we click this button, it locks all three of these nodes together so that when we move one, or we move this main one, it moves these two as well. So you won't lose the collision detectors. So let's pause the video and you guys go ahead and you create that. Let's pause the video. So that's great. We've created our, our player and we're fairly happy with that. We won't be using this scene um, on its own. This is just to kind of make things happen. So if we just save this and we're going to link this player to our to our play scene. So let's save all scenes. Now, I haven't saved this originally, so we need to save our player. So save the scene on its own. That's why it wasn't saving. Now make sure that you click, if I go back to the root folder, Make sure that you click on your scenes folder and you save it as player and press save. So now we should be able to save all scenes and we have and that's fine. So let's go over to our play scene. So don't get this confused with your player scene. This is the play scene. This is where you're going to play your game for the first time. And let's link your player scene to your play scene. So by clicking on this button here, and then selecting the player um, scene, so not the play scene, but the player scene, you press open and press OK. There's no parent node to do that to, so we didn't select this node first. So that's a nice little tip. And then try it one more time. So we want the player and we want to press open. And we can then move that to wherever we want and we'll be happy. So let me just pause the video again and you can set that part up. So just link your player to your play scene. So now let's just save that again. So save all scenes and let's just test it. So let's press the play button and let's just make sure everything works. So play and at the moment nothing happens. If I press my up and down buttons, nothing happens. It's because we have to do just a little bit of scripting. Now once again, all of the scripting that we do will be done on the player itself, on the scene itself. We don't do it on the play scene because if we did that, we'd have to rewrite the code over and over again and it gets a bit problematic. So all we're gonna do, and we can move this now into the center. Um, be careful though, because when you do that, sometimes it does move that one, but no, it's absolutely fine. Let me just save it and just make sure that hasn't moved that one. No, we're good. Um, and we're gonna add a script to the kinematic body 2d now this script that we're going to create you have to the code that we're going to use you have to do it on top of this kinematic body okay the code that we're going to use the vector 2 function that's built in won't work unless it's linked to one of these nodes so from the player we're going to press the script button and then we're going to save it we're going to save it as the player but we're going to make sure it's saved in the scripts folder so let's move up one Let's go to our scripts and let's make sure it's called player and let's press save. Okay. And then create. So that takes us into the script menu. And if you click on the 2D, you'll notice that you can go back here. You can click on this script and it will take you back to the actual script itself. So here we are. This is the new script we've playing. And you'll notice that it's linking itself to this kinematic body 2D. We don't need any of this. So we can get rid of all of this. And we're just going to create a really, really simple function. So our player just needs to move up and down. Before I do anything else, I'm just going to pause the video again. And you guys can create that script. So create the script, and then we'll start again. OK, so the code that we want is really, really simple. So the first thing that we need to execute is a variable. Now, the variable in, in question, we're just going to call motion. And we're going to link this to a function called vector2 open and close bracket. 
you do need to write it as it's written here. So you'll notice that the vector 2 is a capital V and then it's open and close bracket. Motion is lowercase and we start with this var. That's really, really important because it, it creates a variable of motion and then you can set the motion to a particular value. Now what vector 2 does is it allows you to move along an x and a y axis. If it was a vector 3, you could move along a 3D plane, so x, y, and z. But for the vector 2, it just sets up a, a function so that you can move along an x and a y axis. Once we've done that, we're going to create a function, and it has to be this. So it has to be underscore physics, underscore process, all lowercase, and then it's brackets, delta, and then this is a colon, not a semicolon. You'll also note that it's indented, so it's indented by 1. So when you press after the colon, if you press enter, it will give you the indent, okay? And that's really important. This is a bit like Python. GDScript's a bit like Python, and it requires indenting. So the next thing we need to do is say if, and it's capital I for input. So if input is, sorry, if input dot is action pressed, do something. So what we want to do is the input that we're going to use is the UI up. So that's the up arrow. Okay. It's all lowercase and you have to be in between these speech marks and you have to finish it with a colon. And then we're going to call the function from the vector two on the Y axis. So dot Y and we say minus a hundred. So every time that button's pressed, I want you to move minus a hundred pixels along the Y axis. How do you want it to move? It says move and slide motion. And there's a couple of different ways you can move an object, but for now we're just going to say move and slide. So we've got this set up. We can go back to our 2D player, hit the home button and press play. And let's just test our motion. So we press play. We have our object. And if we press the up arrow, it should move. And it doesn't. So I'm missing one particular thing. So let's press stop. What do you think it is I'm missing? So let's go back to our player. Hit this one and it's just missing one thing. So what are you missing? Make sure we've saved it. Save scene and press play again. And there we go. So it's really important to note that if you don't save it, it won't work. Now the problem with that is, is you'll notice that I did all this extra stuff and up in the header, up in the header, it didn't show, it didn't show you a star. And that's where the confusion comes in because if you need to save something, it normally comes up as a star. It does come up as a star here. Okay, so we're happy that now we can move along this particular axis. So let's pause the video again and you guys can write that bit of code in. So we just have just a tiny bit more code to write because we need to now move, make sure it can move up, make sure it can move down, make sure it can move left and right. So how we do this, let's copy this if statement. So if someone clicks on the up button, do this. So control C or command C and then press enter. Now you have to de-indent at this point. So press the backspace so that it comes in line with this if statement. If it doesn't, it won't work and then press um, control V or command V then do it again control V command V and then one more time because we need to create it on all four axis so let's just change the button first so the button we want is down okay the next button we want is let's say left and then the next button we want is right okay so these are all assigned buttons. You can change the assigned, but just to keep this simple and to keep it um, a shorter video, we're just going to leave it like this. Now, in order to go down, all we need to do now is get rid of the minus. So now it will move along the Y axis in a plus direction, whilst this is a minus. So this will go up, and that's a bit weird. The minus is up and plus is down. But there you are, that's just the way it is. Now, the next one, left and right, we have to move it along the X axis. So let's just change both of these along the x-axis and we might have to think about this so left may be minus it may not be let we'll check that so at the moment 
we've got left going minus and right going plus. We've got it working along the X and we've got up and down working along the Y. We've assigned the keys to it. So hopefully that is our full script. Now let's make sure we save. So save all scenes just to make sure. Now that hasn't updated it. So I think for this, yes, to make that work, you can't press the all save all scenes. I did not realize that. You have to press the save scene. Okay, so let's press it again. Here's our app. Let's press the play. So we're going to go up, we're going to go down. Now let's press left. Left, right. There we go. And it works. First time. Now, when it hits the side, it will go off because we haven't actually set up any collisions. And it's also a bit weird that you can only move in kind of like these these right angle movements so we can have a look at that as well and improve it but for now all you need to know is that we've created an app and it has a workable player so complete that code and then in the next in the next video we'll look at collisions